Hi, this is Paul Slack. It's Good News Plan. I'm speaking to LaDonna Gatlin. Hi, how are you? I am well, Paul. Thank you. How are you? Okay, good. You have a famous name because you're a famous person. <laughs> and that's all good. Well, don't tell my grandchildren. They just think I'm nanny, so that's, that's good. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm to sure. My grandchildren. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it's all about as a grandpa. That's what it's all about. It's a beautiful thing. That's exciting, exactly. huh? Are they musical? Uh, actually, not not yet that we can tell. Uh, we have a 13-year-old grandson who is, is an athlete, uh, not musical, and they range in age from 13 down to a newborn. So we have lots of time ahead of us to see if they're going to be. There you go. But you sure the heck are musical and, and uh, will always be musical. And now you're an author and a, a wonderful uh, motivational speaker. And an, uh, we're going to talk about your, your latest book, right? Song in You, uh, Finding Your Voice, Redefining Your Life. And what I find is very interesting is that the book uses the Whitney Pasolatito. <laughs> Tell us whatever made you think of that, and, and it's beautiful. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know about you, Paul, but I'm a person who needs uh, all the help I can get to remember things. An acronym, uh, an initial, a a crutch, if you will. And, of course, because I was born into the Gatlin family, a very musical family, it made perfect sense to do a musical metaphor for the speech and the book that I chose to write. And it just so happened that the principles that I talk about really lined up with Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Do being D-O, do the right thing. Re, Uh R-E, realize your potential and help other people realize theirs. Me, Mm -hmm. spelled M-I, mind your manners. Fa, Mm -hmm. F-A. Failures can be turned into fertilizer. So, S-O, solutions begin with me. Law, laugh. T, T-I, that becomes time is valuable, use it wisely, and that will bring us back to, guess what? (laughs) Go, do the right thing. We end where we begin by doing the right thing. So it's just a really easy way to help us remember some timeless, universal, as well as scriptural, biblical principles that we can live our lives by. Let, let's take uh, let's take maybe one or two, but let's take let's take fertilizer, okay? Because we all have had to live with the reality of our ups and downs in life. Because in essence, that's what life is, right? Uh, peaks and valleys. Tell us a little bit your thoughts on how to. How to handle the, the the valleys and how to handle the peaks? Because you've been there, right? Absolutely. Well, I, that that is in the chapter called "Failures Can Become Fertilizer," and I think if if we are really honest. Uh, many of us, if not most of us, maybe all of us, would say that we have learned some of our greatest lessons in life from the things we've done wrong. Uh, simple example, when you get a speeding ticket, what do you do? You slow down, you know. <laughs> we learn lessons sometimes in a difficult way. We have to pay a $350 ticket, which I had to do one time because I was not being very aware of my speed, and I went through a school zone. I was only going 40 miles an hour, but it was a 15-mile-an-hour speed limit. And I was my brain was in la-la land somewhere I was thinking about the next book I was going to write or the next song I was going to write or, or I don't know, I was thinking about whatever, and my brain wasn't on what I was supposed to be doing, which was a very important thing, honoring the code, the law of the land, and being you know, aware of my surroundings and going 15 miles an hour in a school zone. Well, you know, I just barreled through at 40 miles an hour, and $350 later, I learned a very valuable lesson to this day. <laughs> I have never gotten another ticket for speeding through a school zone because that made me very aware. You know, I had to pay a penalty for my mistake. And, of course, the fact that being a school and tuned into, hey, there are children around here, LaDonna, safety, you know, is paramount in, in an area like this. So, you know, that's just a very simple example of a way that we can learn from our mistakes and, and one that we, you know, probably every one of us, 
has made at some point or another. But we learn from our failures in life, and uh, they can be tremendous teaching tools for what we won't, you know, that we won't do that again in the future. Well, living in the moment is, uh, it is I find, uh, being a grandpa, uh, as you're a grandma, uh, I find that children live in the moment. <laughs> I want it now, or whatever it is. But somewhere we start to lose that, or we start to be thinking about everything but what's in the moment. What, what do you, what's your thought there? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not really sure I understand your question. Help me out with this a little bit more. Okay. Well, I, I think that uh, I was saying that I think that when we're young, we're we're just dealing with the moment of our lives. But as we get older... We have so many other inputs that are, we have bills, we have, uh, you know, uh, work, uh, we have relationships. Yes. It's like a different yes. kind of a thing as you get older where you might just not be paying attention while you're driving because your brain might be somewhere else. So I'm wondering, how, how can somebody, though, then deal with that? What, 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 um, do we, what, what do we do? Excellent question. As we get older, we're thinking about 411 things, and in the culture in which we live, where there are so many entities that are coming at us at once. I mean, I think we we sometimes live our lives uh, awaiting the next ping or ding of our cell phone that alerts us to, oh, there's an instant message or there's an email or there's a voicemail or there's a Facebook post or there's a tweet or there's a this or a that. And there's just so much information coming at us at one time. I think we have to, uh, would you not agree? No, oh, I'm, I'm in Times Square right now. Forget okay, it. I could just, like, know. lie down. I'm exhausted just walking here. <laughs> information overload. We all are living under information overload. And I think in, in this culture we have to make a decision and a conscientious uh, effort to just focus on, as my co-writer, Dr. Mike Marino, so beautifully put it, do what's in front of you. Boy, those mm-hmm. are just six of the most powerful words I think I've ever, he- ever heard. And Dr. Mm-hmm. Marino is a, has a PhD in counseling. And if he is, t- I mean, he said it to me over the course of co-writing the book with him when I would get overwhelmed with thinking down the road, oh, we've got, we've got to meet this publishing date or we've got to meet this deadline or we've got to do this. And he'd go, LaDonna, we're working on this chapter today. We're working on this section of this chapter today. Just mm-hmm. do what's in front of you today and concentrate mm-hmm. on that and get from that moment then to the next. That is fabulous advice. And I don't, you know, I needed a co-author and a Ph.D. in counseling to remind me of that even mm-hmm. as we co-wrote our book together. I hear you. That it all makes sense. And what do you want people to gain and glean from your book? Well, I believe that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. God made us in a unique way and that every individual in the world has something special and unique that only they can give the world their song to sing, if you will. Some people say live your life, dream your dream, do your thing, walk your road. I say sing your song. Be that unique individual that you can be and offer to the world that diamond, that wonderful quality that only you have that you can sing out to the world and give to the world. Beautiful, beautiful. Anything else you'd like to share at this moment? What's your website and uh, tell us the name of the book again and where can we get it and things like that. You bet. Thank you for asking. Website's real simple, LaDonnaGatlin.com. That's L A. D O N N A G A T L I N dot com. Yes, I'm the baby sister of all the Gatlin boys, Larry, Steve, and Rudy. I'm the one with the best legs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the book is available there uh, at the website. You can get it on Amazon, at major book outlets. And I just, I'd love to hear from anybody. I blog there at the website so you can kind of stay in touch with what I'm thinking and what's going on in my life. And I just say this life's a song, sing yours. Beautiful. Last question then. What's good news for you, Madonna? Uh, good news for me is just that God is in control and I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> 